let's do some news! <laughs> My name is Mike B. Today's day is September 11th, 2020. Time is 3.55 p.m. We have not done a news show in a minute because things are hectic here with homeschooling and everything else that's going on. Uh, but we do have some announcements to make today that I've already made, but I'm going to make them again because I have a platform to do that so I could do those kinds of things. And we're going to, the first announcement we're going to make is the Arsenal by your favorite. By your favorite Mike B is coming out September 16th. You can get it on Bandcamp. You can pre-order on Bandcamp. Uh, you can also, I think, pre-order on Apple Music, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, and it's going to be um, uh, available on pretty much every streaming platform. So, new music from me. That's right. Smash that wet. Smash that wet emotes. The songs that I have in here, I think you guys will enjoy very much, especially if you're a big fan of Negative PH stuff. We got that sound in here. We, me, I got that sound in here. <laughs> so, please check it out. Please. Please buy my album. Or listen to it. Just listen to it. That's all I care about. Just listen to it. That's the whole point of making music. People listen to it and enjoy it. September 16th, next Wednesday. All right? We good? You guys got it? Look at that. Wait, get that dumpster fire shit out of here. Get that out of here. What is this? Oh, it's a hype fire. Oh, no, that's a good one. That's a good one. Hype fire. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be on Spotify. Uh, all the other music is going back on Spotify. All the negative PH stuff and AK Mike B stuff that I took down is available on Spotify now. So you could go and re-add it to your list if you like. Uh, I had to switch distributors and I got all that stuff taken care of. So, yay. Yeah. In other news, in actual news, in real other 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 Mike B news, whatever, outside of me news, uh, Ninja's back! Oh my god, you guys are so excited! Look, he changes hair! Look at him! Look at him! He changes go back! Look, look! He changes hair! And he's back streaming exclusively on Twitch! So we've been following these guys going back and forth between platforms and getting all kinds of fancy, fancy, fancy. Uh, haircuts and also paychecks uh, to do all of this uh, bouncing back and forth. We know that he is now exclusive with Twitch again, and uh, it's dude. It totally looks like XQC. Yes, <laughs> it really does. <laughs> oh no! Um, <laughs> but I mean, good for him. I mean, it's it's it. Let me let me tell you. Uh, let me tell you. It's tough to. Uh, to ditch a an aesthetic that you're known for you know you know what i'm saying guys you know you know you know you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying it's tough to ditch that aesthetic that you're known for and all of his emotes have blue hair so it's no 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 idea what are you talking about <laughs> uh so ninja is back streaming on exclusively on twitch uh August of last year is when he, I think it was August, August 19th or something like that of last year is when he uh, became a full-time contracted mixer streamer exclusive. And obviously he got paid from that. We always, we speculate on how much, how many millions he would have gotten from that. Oh, could it be a hundred million dollars? It's a crazy number, right? We had no idea. And we still don't know how much it was, but we know that he got money. And we know that he got money to come back. What is the, what is let that play in the background? Here? Oh, no, we don't need the music or any of that stuff. A new chapter begins. Oh, uh, yep, there it is. Okay, I guess it's, that's, I'm going to, we'll have to loop it. Um, so, yes, he is coming back to Twitch. And he is, um, I'm going to put this up here. Uh, 25 million? Oh, 30 million? Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't really know. We just know he's exclusive. He got his old porn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for really reminding us. That's right. So he's, he's streaming on that site where uh, some kids probably discovered their first porn. <laughs> where did you see? Where did you see your first porno? Do you remember where you were? Yeah. I was at twitch.tv slash ninja. <laughs> That's where I saw it. Uh, so yeah, he's back and he's streaming exclusively. What I think is interesting about this is that it's an exclusive deal. Which means that more than likely, obviously, Ninja got paid for this. Uh, this is too, this is too, hold on a second, this is too, okay. Uh, more than likely, Ninja got paid for this. Uh, and it makes me, like, 
curious, like, there's no way it's an astounding amount of cash. I can't imagine that it's an astounding amount of cash. Uh, but, oh, well, mainly because there's just nowhere else to go. Where else is he going to go? There's nothing, there's nothing out there. Like, Twitch right now has basically won. Um, by the way, is that a mod mic he's using there? Huh, interesting. Uh, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube is where streamers go when they don't have any other options. Um, look at Ice, look at Doc. That's where you go when you have no other options, unless you start on Facebook or on, on YouTube. Now, I, I'm, again, I want to make sure that, that that last part's pretty clear. I'm not saying that everybody who streams on YouTube doesn't have any other options. Um, just if you start off on Twitch and you make it big on Twitch and you go to YouTube, it's because you're probably running low on options for some reason, whether you're banned or whatever. Um, Doc is a trendsetter. I know. Well, we said that about Ice too. Uh, Doc did actually make, uh, did have a deal with uh, EA's NFL whatever it's called. Uh, I can't remember the name of the actual game. NFL 2020, maybe. Uh, and uh, Doc played with Snoop. He played against Snoop. I don't know if they were actually talking to each other or seeing if they were talking to each other in real time or anything like that because they were like shit talking at each other. Uh, but they were playing against each other. So yeah, he got to play with Snoop. Um, which is kind of cool. I mean, who wouldn't want to play with Snoop? I think that's awesome. I think it's better than Drake, personally. Personally. I'm sure I'm sure somebody 15 years my junior would say otherwise. What are you talking about, man? Drake is a trendsetter. Ugh, shut up. It's all about perspective. Snoop played PUBG. I think he did actually, yeah. Kind of. But Snoop actually played this time. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, Rhoda. God, you beat me to it. <laughs> You're stealing my jokes. <laughs> but yeah, Snoop did actually play this time. <laughs> and, uh, and Doc Doc got to play with him. So yeah. Uh, uh, Doc also streamed with somebody on the Twitch platform. Uh, the name's still mine right now, but he, he streamed with somebody, a co-op stream, uh, but, and I think it, but the person was not banned for it, so I don't, this is really weird, the doc, I mean, I know we have Ninja up on the screen, but like, but frankly, Ninja doesn't really have anywhere to go, but he still managed to get an exclusive deal, so good for Ninja, good for Tyler Blevins, good for him, getting paid, like, two, twice, three times in one year, for fuck's sake, um, it was so weird because the time he didn't have his partner chat mark. Oh, on his uh, how how what was his viewership up to when he first started streaming when he came back? Clayton, do you happen to remember? Um, I know that <clears throat> I know that uh, Doc was in like the half a million mark or something crazy, like stupid numbers. But I don't know how those numbers. You know, it's it's like how do those numbers scale? Like Instagram followers. Like for right now, right now, for example, I think I have more Instagram followers than I do Twitter followers. But it's way easier to get twi Instagram followers than it is Twitter followers. You know what I'm saying? So like viewership on YouTube, I don't feel it scales the same way as it does on Twitter. So if 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 Ninja came back and he was doing twenty thousand, you know, twenty thousand viewers, that seems pretty low. <laughs> That seems pretty low. Okay, I didn't know. I was like, okay, if, if that's actually what it was, that seems pretty low. I was, I was, I was trying to set this up and frame this so that way, he had, you know, there's an excuse for having some less than five hundred thousand viewers or whatever it is that Doc had. Um, but that seems pretty low. So, hmm. Uh, but uh, back to the story. Doc is doing great. <laughs> <laughs> we still don't know why Doc is banned. We're just gonna switch. Fuck Ninja. <laughs> we just still don't know why Doc is banned. We don't have no. We have no idea. Uh, oh, what is this? Ninja. Oh, contract. Did you find something? Hold on. Hold on. No mystery by that. There's no mystery. Yeah, Ninja. Ninja is very vanilla. Very boring. You know, it's like it's great. Like I would let Declan watch Ninja. I would not let. I, I, I would have to think about letting Declan watch Dr. Disrespect. I would have to really think about that. But I would definitely let, no questions asked. Yeah, Declan could watch Ninja. Maybe not some of his past clips. <laughs> uh, but what is this? Let me see. Um, I see Ninja is back on Twitch for the moment, at least. Tyler Black, for the moment, at least. Funny. Uh, does it actually say how much he's gotten? Is he 100,000 views? There's any indication of the benefits exclusive to Twitch on the platform support? Okay, so uh, no real info on anything in terms of whether or not he's getting, we know he's getting paid, but we just don't know how much. Uh, they, these these deals don't necessarily disclose uh, publicly, so, you know. Um, 
That was August 5th the article came out. Yeah. Uh but yeah, but but he's officially yeah, he's officially exclusive and all that stuff. So yep. Good for him. Um he played with PewDiePie also, that's right. I mean, this is a great opportunity for Doc to like reach out into to an entire group of uh new demographics that don't watch Twitch. There's a lot of people who just don't watch Twitch. Whether it's they don't necessarily um get the community like they don't want to they don't like the community or they don't really find it they don't have anybody on there that they that they necessarily follow because a lot of twitch streamers are organic like they started on twitch they built an audience on twitch and so if you weren't part of the twitch community when this person was taken off then you weren't necessarily you know there for the ride um whereas youtube you know with youtube streaming there's a lot of people who just like oh yeah i used to watch philip defranco for example again uh philip defranco and now uh He's streaming, so I'm gonna watch his streams. So that's that is that definitely taps into a, a market that does probably doesn't have a, a lot of actual overlap with viewership. Like people probably just like, yeah, I watch my favorite YouTuber on, on when they stream sometimes. To them, it's just another form of content, you know. Yeah, they stream sometimes. That's it. Um, <clears throat> you only watch Twitch for AKA Mike B, my dude. That's right, me too. Unless it's Murda, I watch Murda too. I like Murda. Murda is like some of the best. Uh, some of the some of the best. If you, if if it's like a weekend, uh, like Saturday Sunday night, uh, watch Murda. M U R D A, or Jovian. Both are great. Have them both at the same time. Fuck it. Some music on one side and some drag races on the other. It's amazing. It's so good. So, anyways, um, Murda. We we wrap up the story of Ninja with the promotion for Murda. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh next up <laughs> what is justin tv was the original just chatting i remember some i remember um i remember justin Ty justin tv justin tv having some really really strange like reality tv type streams remember they had like those 24 hour streams where people had cameras set up all over their houses i know they still do them in some places but they weren't they're not popular right now um but they definitely were for a minute there because like, yo, Big Brother was a huge thing. Uh, reality TV show in general was a huge thing, but like Big Brother was like massive. So so people would set up cameras all over the place and then they would um, uh, and people would watch and I would watch uh, some of those as well. Uh, Twitch did that sleep TV thing that one time. I don't remember that. Slasher just tweeted about Leafy being perma banned. Leafy was just banned from Twitch. Didn't he just move to Twitch? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh my god. Uh he's a he's a just he's a YouTuber. Or well, uh, he's a Twitch streamer. Was a Twitch streamer. I don't fucking know anymore. Um <clears throat> uh, hold on, let's let's what's that? Breaking news! That's all I got. Uh breaking news! Leafy, he said, what the fuck, Bezos? Just when I started having fun on Twitch. Uh, Twitch support, is there any way to appealing this? Was my first offense, bro. Uh, and it says, based on community, <laughs> on review of your activity or content, we've issued a community guideline strike against your account. As a result, your access to Twitch services is restricted. Reason, engaging in hateful conduct and threats of violence against a person or group or people. Uh, where the violation occurred on stream or VOD. Whoa. I thought there should there, thought, <laughs> I, I thought there would be a warning first or something. I mean, it was obvious I was pushing it, but I'm still. <laughs> <laughs> this dude came. <laughs> oh my god! Ah, uh, uh, rupture an organ. This dude came from the wild west, thinking like, "Oh yeah, I'll just go to Twitch. It's fine. Totally, don't worry about it." And then he's just like, "Whoa! You guys actually enforce your policies? What?" I knew I was pushing it, but well, that there, there, you answered your own question right there. What the fuck, Bezos? <laughs> uh, I know I, I know nothing about Leafy. I've heard that his community can be a little toxic at times, but at the same time, I have no experience with them whatsoever. But just from these tweets alone, I think it's hilarious that somebody thinks, "Oh, it was obvious I was pushing it," but I thought it would be, I thought I would get a slap on the wrist. No. no, I knew I was wrong, but <laughs> I love that he says, what the fuck, Bezos? <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> well, I don't know where he's going to go now. Shit. Isn't his YouTube account? Like, where's his YouTube account? Isn't that thing canceled now? I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't know enough about this story to comment on it and incorporate it into actual news. So we'll just go and accept breaking news and that's it. More on that later. Okay. So, moving on. 
<laughs> Facebook time. Oh, we got removed from YouTube also. Oh, hilarious. So good, so good. I mean, I mean, it's, it sucks, but but you know, if he knows he was pushing it and then he's surprised that he's <laughs> that he's that he got busted for it, I don't know, man. Sympathy, boy. Uh, not much of it. Ah, uh, so. Some time ago, Clunkers, my dude, let's turn off, but thank you. Thank you for Terraria tips, too. Uh, so, some time ago, we talked about this gentleman by the name of t -Few. Now, <clears throat> this was a pretty big story because this was, as it says, the esports industry's first major employment lawsuit. And it has come to an end. Uh, so just as a reminder, if there is a way I could kind of summarize this a little bit. But basically, it says here, it says, he claimed his contract with FaZe allowed the organization to collect up to 80% of the revenue he earned from third parties and prevented him from signing lucrative sponsorship deals. You remember this? He was trying to set up his own stuff on the side and he ended up getting fucked by contract stuff. A contract that he signed okay um and it raised this whole argument about if a contract is malicious then it should not even be made versus if a contract is malicious well why did you sign it <laughs> and so there was this huge yeah contract dispute uh he signed it but kind of thing uh, and that was happening Shit, I think like was it last year sometime uh, actually it says after a 15 month contact wow it's been 15 months since that holy shit beginning of last year so uh, it says uh, TFU's lawyer Brian Friedman said it was the first significant case to ask questions about the relationship between gamers and their supposed management the contracts and the potentially illegal actions by those calling themselves representatives because remember some of the contracts and stuff that we've seen pop up especially if you follow like um, a slasher or a video game attorney or any of those guys um, you've seen plenty of instances where they come where, where they'll say not slasher but like definitely a video game attorney um and the other guy I forget his name um <clears throat> there's only like two video game attorneys uh but they'll say it's like read the contract get it get a lawyer to review the contract for you because this kind of situation is avoidable it's avoidable uh i feel like this is just admitting you're dumb yeah basically uh <laughs> and it says uh, so so after they filed that suit uh, because they were saying that that he wasn't allowed to basically make money and you know he's in his prime he wants to make as much money as he can Leonard French thank you so much Julian um FaZe fired back with a lawsuit uh and they said that FaZe asserted that the player had earned upwards of 20 million dollars since joining in April 2018 now by that time it had only been like seven or eight months um, if, if this is a 15 min month dispute and yeah it had been like maybe a year um <clears throat> thanks to its unique methods of helping him create and promote content, and that it had collected only $60,000 of his deals. And so that was their argument. And so they took that to court. I didn't read the contract. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so that was until today. This news comes one month after California judge dismissed TFU's original complaint. And with only phase suit left outstanding and a trial set for October, the situation was primed for a settlement. Uh, and so with that said, so the settlement happened and the case is over. We don't know how much it was for. Typically, we don't know how much. <laughs> There's so much money being thrown around. We have no idea how much it is. Uh, and he said, with that said, the suit shined a light on some of the interesting dynamics that arise when a player shifts from being purely a professional player uh, into a full-time content creator that also plays in some esports competitions. So that was the creative distinction that was made with the case uh with tfu where he was saying that i'm not just somebody who plays for this team i'm also a content creator and he actually well his lawyer uh labeled him as an artist and so that artist that that basically gave him a bit of a workaround with this case and gave him a leg up by promoting himself because he's a content creator he's making content you know left right and center like whether it's twitter or if it's youtube or whatever there's content being made all over the place and there's a thin line between content and art um and so it says uh, he adds the typical esports player contract hasn't changed much as a result 
but the contracts between teams and content creators have, mostly in the sense that we've begun creating uh, bespoke terms for these, these types of arrangements because they vary so much from influencer to influencer. So yeah, he did he did kind of shift gears and, and, and go the artist angle, which gave him a leg up, and that resulted in, a, uh, in him basically winning the case. And I went to uh, I went to Faze Banks, uh, the, the founder. I went to his Twitter account to see what he had to say about it, and I found his tweet that came out the day after, and it says, "Faze is the coolest shit." That's it. That was the day after this. Uh, the, <laughs> the the judgment came down. Faze is the coolest shit. Super cool, man. All right. Well, thanks for the thanks for the statement. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, moving on. You guys seem super excited about the update from TFU, so we'll move on. Uh, Epic versus Apple, very legal, very cool. Exactly. So we have an up we have an update with Apple. We have lots of updates about the Apple fiasco. Thanks. Businesses love putting sketchy things in contracts that have to be challenged in court. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, uh. A lot of stuff has happened since the last time we talked about Epic and Apple. A lot. So I have a lot of quotes that I set aside for this because it's a lot of shit. So we'll start back on August 17th of 2020. It's so long ago in pandemic years. Uh, but this is when Apple threatened to revoke Epic's dev tools, which would also include basically any game that's running with unreal engine now what does that mean what does that mean well if you revoke access to the dev tools for unreal engine that means that you can no longer use the app store uh to promote up to, to push updates uh if the uh, if ios were to update to like 10.5 or whatever oh whatever if if ios updated and they changed their you know the structure or how they do whatever with their dev tools then that would <clears throat> basically remove any access from developers on updating their games so it wouldn't be like an immediate hit but it would definitely have a long-standing uh hit on anybody who uses the unreal engine to make their game which is like millions of games uh and so it says right here, it says, it's not that Apple is outright removing every game that uses Unreal Engine iOS, but for many Unreal Engine favoring mobile devs, the results may as well be the same. Uh, it says, millions of developers rely on the Unreal Engine to develop software, and hundreds of millions of consumers use that software, or use Epic. Same from Epic. Um, <clears throat> it means the seven games on Apple can't be updated. The seven games, they have a ton of games. We'll we'll talk about that in a minute, but um, you get the images of toddlers throwing toys at each other. It's it's so it's so silly. It really is silly. But I've already I, yeah, like I said uh, last time we talked about this, I am on Epic side on the, in this case as 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 an iPhone user, right? As a longtime iPhone user, I I understand. So Steve Jobs was asked about these companies that are these app developers that come out and say that the app store is an oppressive regime of sorts, right? It's an oppressive market that you can't do anything without the app store. You can't do anything without their consent. And when we look at this, my perspective on this is windows. Imagine if on windows, you could only buy stuff from the windows store. Like, and that was it. You couldn't install anything on the side without like jailbreaking your PC, right? You just you, you couldn't. So uh, that is where I feel Ep Apple is at now. And so Apple is at the point to where they have, there's more iPhones than PC users, right? And I just made that stat up last time. and I'm going to make it up again, but I'm fairly certain it's true that there are more people have an iPhone than those that use uh, a Windows based device regularly um i'm sure they love to do that oh sure i'm sure every company will would love capitalism i'm sure they would love to do that for sure um but it's just something that's not going to case yeah there was a case like this already with windows probably what epic was using as part of their case uh you know, microsoft actually backed them up on this too <laughs> so <clears throat> so this this obviously became a problem because now apple is basically saying well you know what you fuck us we'll fuck you and everybody associated your friends your family all of them and so that's basically what they're saying is they're going to take down 
basically everything that uses uh, uh uses this um and Microsoft guys sued for so many. They've had so many uh, anti. Uh, cons- what, uh, oh gosh, like monopoly suits. God damn, I can't remember the, what what it was. But they've been they've been in some legal shit. Antitrust. Thank you. They've been they've had they've had some antitrust issues, lawsuits going on for d- basically decades now. At this point, yeah, they're just perpetually in a, in a loop. Uh, this is like a fight between two mafias. Yeah, it's very, very, very accurate. Right? Yeah, they're very true. It really is. Um, and so, so update about a week later after that, August 25th, the judge says Apple can't prevent Fortnite Maker from using its developer tools. And I have a couple quotes here from the judge. The judge says, Apple has a reputation for going the distance. <laughs> it's not surprising they acted the way they did here. But as I said, I think they overreacted. Uh, in her written decision, Gonzalez Rogers said that Apple is hard pressed to dispute that even if Epic Games succeeded on the merits, it would be too late to save all the projects by third party developers relying on the engine that were shelved when support was unavailable. And so that's that's talk about the developer tools. So so basically they got a uh, they, they suspended this. So th- there's no way that Apple can say <clears throat> um, uh, that the all Unreal Engine games basically cannot be updated anymore. So good, so good. So at least all those developers are protected. Uh, but Apple has come back around basically the next day, we're a couple days later, and Apple has terminated. And they said they were going to do this. Remember, they said this initially. They said on the 28th, if you do not remove, a- Epic has the choice here. If you do not remove the, uh, the in-app payments uh, system that you had put in, then we're going to shut down your account. And so they did. Um, Apple going for speed. Yep. Yeah. So this was this uh, was a ruling I actually liked. You can't fuck over everyone just because one other. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that that was that seemed like a stretch, right? Like a- Apple going that route and saying, "Well, we're just going to remove every Unreal Engine game." Period. Fuck you. Like that was that's that was a stretch, man. That was really fucked up. Um. So thankfully, this judge. Thankfully, a judge exists that actually understands what's happening here they understand the repercussions of this they don't they just think oh it's a bunch of games whatever book of video games you know thank god because it'd be a lot of developers that would just be shit out of luck just done um and so apple has now terminated the account it says uh, apple says in a quote uh it says we are disappointed that we've had to terminate the epic games account on the app store we have worked with the team at epic games for many years on their launches and releases uh the court recommended that epic comply with the app store guidelines while their case moves forward <laughs> just 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 say uncle just say uncle and then, <laughs> just just say, that's all you gotta do happy to say uncle uh it says it says uh instead they repeatedly submit fortnite updates designed to violate the guidelines of the apple store apple app store uh this is not fair to all other developers in the app store and is putting customers in the middle of their fight <laughs> sorry because they're they're basically doing the same thing by trying to get all the unreal engine based games like removed come on uh no auntie uh, so, uh, Tim Sweeney obviously responded to this. He's very active on Twitter, thankfully. Uh, and he says, Apple's statement isn't forthright. They chose to terminate Epic's account. They didn't have to. Apple suggests we spam the App Store review process. That's not so. Epic submitted three Fortnite builds, two bug fix updates, and the Season 4 update with this note. It says, hello, Fortnite build version 14.0 with the new season four has been uploaded through the App Store Connect. This build continues to offer customers the choice of in-app purchases. <laughs> and that line right there, like that's the line right there. The Apple's like, no, no. <laughs> Everything on the top and the bottom is fine. But the middle is a no. Uh, it says the bill continues to offer customers the choice of in-app purchases through either Apple's payment solution or through Epic Direct Payments. Epic yeah. is sub- oh hold on a sec. Epic is submitting this version in case Apple wishes to restore Fortnite to the App Store in time for the season four launch. Yes, sir. So quick, let come me here. Tell you something. Quick, go. The ingredients for a for a gold crown is. Five gold bars. Uh huh. And one ruby. Uh huh. That makes a gold crown. Uh huh. And I mm-hmm. need to collect twenty gel mm-hmm. to, to order to make a slime crown. Make a slime crown. All right. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Tell chat what boss we beat yesterday. 
Oh, no, you're, you're, you're gonna say it. They see you. Yesterday, I fought off against Terraria's most second boss, the King Slime. That's right. And what happened? Did we get him? Yes. Yes. And what did you get? A solid fire. And? And? Also, a slime saddle. That's right, a slime saddle. Oh, it's so awesome. We click, oh, when you click R, a slime will appear and with you on top of That's it. That's right. All right, give me a kiss so I can do my news. Love you. Mwah. We're going to play later, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> the power of bounce. Oh, yeah. We're having a blast playing this together. It's so good. Uh, good good father. Good father. Some bonding time. We always play video games together. So, uh, happy to find something that I have not played. I can discover a new. It's so good. Uh, so, so this is what Tim Sweeney says. Now, obviously, Tim, it, Tim and Epic are deliberately n like not removing they're, they're they're it's not like they don't know what the problem is they know what the problem is they can restore full functionality of fortnite but they choose not to because they want to uh, uh they want to fight this and so tim's response is perfectly understandable from his perspective he's saying he's pointing the finger he's saying no 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 you chose <laughs> you chose to remove our game come on so this is it, it is silly it is it is like cheering for whichever million oh i choose i choose this million slash billionaire i choose this million billionaire uh it, it's just uh, it was just, uh they should take out the option to pay through the apple store uh apps apple store and version just to, just to stick it to them they they could i mean it even says it even says apple statement even says they could remove it and that way the game is still accessible and playable to everybody up through the end of the suit, whatever the results of the suit are, uh, is. But, uh, you know, they choose not to. And it's true, they choose not to. And like I said, you know, I I understand. So again, like the, going back to that Steve Jobs interview where he says that people will sneak in bad things to their platform. And, and then when they get the game removed, they go screaming to the press about oppression and all that stuff. And then they they try to take us to the court and we fight them. And, and like, you know, Steve Jobs' approach was kind of like, we're not going to change. We're not ever going to change. Obviously, Tim Apple's approach is basically the same thing. We're not going to change. We're going to fight so ferociously that we're going to not just target you, but all the games peripheral to you. Uh, thankfully, it was an injunction for that, but still. Um, you see, the easy way to do this is for all the major companies that support this to do the same thing. That would be ideal. That would be ideal. Because the the bulk of Apple's uh, iOS earnings comes from games. So if you were to hit them there, then you could, uh, then you could potentially bend them to your will. Now, Fortnite obviously is a huge moneymaker for not just Epic, but obviously also uh, Apple. But they're willing to make that sacrifice. Both sides are willing to make that sacrifice. Now there's like zero income coming from the uh, iOS version of Fortnite, which is crazy, which is crazy. You've heard people being against Apple because they claim Steve Jobs would hate it. I guess they're wrong. Yeah. Steve Jobs was pretty, uh, I mean, he was pretty outspoken about everything. So if you have a question about how Steve Jobs would have done something, you probably could find an interview where you would have said flat out how he would handle something. <laughs> there, there was, there was not a lot of mis mystery behind Steve Jobs. <laughs> uh, he also, yeah, he also hated games. Yeah, he was, uh, I mean, he recognized the the value of it from a, from a money perspective, but still. So it says, while, uh, so while Epic Games... This is my favorite part. While Epic Games is now officially banned from the App Store, Apple is tactfully promoting PUBG Mobile for iOS users, which is an alternative popular battle royale game that, that competes directly with Fortnite. So Apple, out of spite, is, <laughs> or just randomly, you know, uh, is promoting PUBG. Also made on the Unreal Engine. But you know, it's fine. Sure, Epic gets 5% of those sales and everything that goes through uh, the PUBG store or any PUBG purchase. Uh, but does it actually compete though? We know it doesn't. I think we know that it doesn't. Just because it's the same genre does not mean that it's a competitor. Uh, maybe some will play the other because simply it's a shooter. 
But for the most part, I think that we understand that. Apple, apparently not really. <laughs> PUBG suddenly becomes the big streaming game again. I wonder why. That's right. There's another story uh, related to PUBG that I don't have the full details on. So I, I don't have it in, in, in today's list. I really wish I would have gotten that. Uh, but PUBG, I think in India, is banned. Um, not necessarily because of the game, but because of Tencent. Uh India, India, and ten, and China have not been getting along as of late, um, and so India. So the stuff that like Trump is doing with like saying that you know uh, American-based companies working with Chinese companies basically are on notice, right? Like TikTok and all that, uh, and several other companies that that Tencent owns a huge chunk in. Um, yeah, they're on notice because they could potentially lose or they will lose their ability to work together. And but India is, I guess, just like fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and it sh I should note, you might not know this, but PUBG is huge, like seriously huge in India. Everybody in India has a phone. Everybody has a phone. This is not like some third world country or whatever. This is like a bazillion people and they all have phones um, and they all play games and a lot of them play PUBG. So this is a huge hit to, uh, to PUBG. And of course, Tencent, which I'm not mad about at all, at all. Not a fan of Tencent. <laughs> Never have been. Well, I was, I was until they laid all of us off. So then, fuck them. So <laughs> the border dispute ruffles some feathers. Oh yeah, phones in India are like standard living. Exactly. Do you guys not have phones? <laughs> Do people really play these shooters on mobile? I make mean, it barely stand using a controller for that. I said, I said this when Declan was first starting to use his phone. We gave him like an old iPhone, like four or something like that, like one of our old phones. Um, and seeing how quickly he could navigate things at the the young age of three, how quickly he can navigate things, it, it became pretty obvious, like especially in games, that the mentality of oh, you can't you can't compete with a blank doesn't mean shit like that really is not a, that's not that doesn't that doesn't really apply because if you're if you grow up on controllers as many of us have or kbm as many of us have you could get really good at that right if you grow up on touchscreen guess what you can get really fucking good at that and there might be some limitations you might think like with controllers is like oh aim assist and you know it can't be quite as precise as a mouse and keyboard and all that stuff but you will still have people that will break that mold and that will show you that you can be that good with that and the same thing is the same thing applies to touch screens um the issue with the on touch screen is still just they can't turn around fast enough but they could still but they could still remain competitive compared to a lot um just look at our parents versus us same thing yeah, what do, wait, what do our parents like play games on? <laughs> Nothing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, huh? What are our, what do our players parents play games on? I guess it's keyboard, huh? I don't know. Not even that. Shit. Newspapers, horseshoes, cards. You guys are fucking hilarious. You guys are so funny. Oh my god. <laughs> yes! All those things, you're right! I didn't even think about real games. It didn't even click. You're right! These guys are so good at kick the can. God, didn't even didn't even cross my mind that real games exist. Fuck. Fucking boomer. I'm, I'm, am I? I forgot about real games. <laughs> Vaughn, you're just in time. Hoop stick. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> um, so Apple revised just uh, today. Actually, they just revised their um, their their games, their their streaming apps, and their in-app purchases um, guidelines and policies. And so I'll read that some of that for you real quick. Um, lawn darts. Those good horseshoe. You know, we actually have a horseshoe set in the backyard because my family reunion. We play that a lot. We have like we're pretty competitive in the horseshoe uh, department. We have like. We have a a, 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 um, a a trophy that has like tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of names on it. Every year it gets handed off and so another name gets added. And it's always like the same two dudes. It's like, oh God, who was it? I don't remember. It's like, let's just say like Mark and, and Mark and Jeff. It's like Mark and Jeff, Mark and Jeff, Mark and Jeff, Jeff and Mark, Jeff and Mark, Jeff and Mark, Mark and Jeff, Jeff and Mark. It's like the same dudes every, every year. Um, so anyways, 
Oh, horseshoes. Yeah, cornhole. Cornhole is the other one that's picking up. That's being picked up right now with uh, my family reunions. If we ever get another one. Uh, so it says the rules now say Apple will allow these services to operate on its App Store. This is in in uh, in relation to uh, the X Cloud and the uh, Microsoft Game Streaming Service, which is X Cloud, and then whatever the Google one was. I forget. Um, but basically. These these companies are like Microsoft and Google are trying to put a game streaming service on iOS. So that way you can just pop open your phone and play whatever random game you want through the Xbox service or through uh, Stadia. <laughs> Specifically, actually, Stadia is, is, is the uh, is the other Google. But uh, uh, but yeah, they're trying to. They're, they're trying to put rules around that because it's a new it's a new thing, you know, new new to iOS. Anyways, not new to like PC users, right? But still new to iOS. Um, but listen to these rules, okay? So Apple says <clears throat> these services can operate on its App Store. Yay! That's great! Wow, a Stadia-like service on my phone—that's amazing. Uh, so long as each individual title offered by the service is submitted individually to Apple's app review for vetting and has its own app store listing. That is the biggest but. That is the biggest but. Ever. Really. Really. It's... It basically makes it useless. <laughs> it ba it base Like, what? Every, every game that's already been vetted by the ESRB or Peggy is going to have to go through yet another rating group uh, and be vetted and also have its own existing listing. So what happens if you have a game that exists on two different platforms? Do they have two different two different streaming platforms? Do they have two different entries in on the App Store? So why is it why isn't every movie on Netflix a different listing on the App Store? Man, Merbzing, you are a fucking genius. Exactly. Why? Why not? Because Apple makes too much money on games. They make way too much money on games to let to let that slide there's no way do they want to review every youtube video as well it's you, you guys i'm so glad you could see how ridiculous it is and so i saw this news and it's just like this sounds like a, an amazing thing for gamers <laughs> i'll be a pain in the ass but also the huge pain in the ass for I mean, so the whole point is to have games that can that can't run on phones, so the Apple listing is beyond stupid. Yeah, even Apple would suffer as a store would be flooded with garbage. Thank you. Yeah, imagine if Steam had a direct link to just upload shit to Apple. This is no way. There's absolutely no way. So we did get a response from Microsoft very quickly, by the way, because this was today at 10 a.m. Right? So we got a response from Microsoft, and it says this remains a bad experience for customers. Gamers want to jump directly into a game from their curated catalog within one app, just like they do with movies or songs, and not be forced to download over 100 apps to play individual games from the cloud. We're committed to putting gamers at the center of everything we do, and providing a great experience is core to that mission. <sighs> so silly. It's... it's it's, it's Apple's basically just like shutting down everybody. Everybody wants to get everybody wants to get in on iOS and and Android, okay? Like both. Um but it's easier to get on Android. It's much easier to get on Android. Android's not quite as 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 locked down as obviously not as locked down as uh as iOS. Um but iOS still has a, a commanding amount of uh distribution through their platform. And so everybody's trying every every avenue they can to get something on phones. Um, and yeah, it's like, just everyone just jumps into Android. It's like, fuck you, Apple. It might actually get there. It seriously might actually get there. Ima imagine Apple right now is doing everything they can to keep their system locked. 
They want to keep their system locked uh, for security reasons, for whatever reasons. Um, does this apply to Steam Link? It's literally the same thing. N no, because the Steam Link doesn't um, just streams your existing games, just streams them. It doesn't uh, like on enough from another system. It doesn't come from a service in the cloud necessarily. I feel like there's like a gray area there, Mervzing, right? Like that you would think that one would apply, not the other, but still. But that's the biggest thing is that Apple wants their thirty percent income. They they absolutely do. <coughs> Excuse me. You're the curator on Steam, like yeah, it's true. Yep. So maybe that's maybe that's the uh, the middle ground there. Uh, but everybody wants to get in involved with or get into the Apple ecosystem without necessarily having to go through the 30% cut that Apple takes from basically everything. Um, and I feel like maybe some years ago that was a cool thing. Like that was great to have a system that like just didn't lock up because you downloaded and installed something that installed some other shit in the background, you know, like that there are it doesn't happen often like you don't hear about some you very rarely hear about some widespread keylogger or whatever uh on android devices outside of tiktok of course for, which was on everything um <clears throat> which is why they came under fire uh but it 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 seems like we're i feel like we're moving very quickly at least within the next few years into a system where like phones are just pcs they're just hardware you could put whatever you want on these things like, why not just let that be, let that happen? And so Apple's going to fight that tooth and nail. And they're going to, they're probably going to fight that until they become obsolete. And people do jump ship to Android or whatever other system, you know, Hawaii or whatever, I don't know how it's pronounced, uh, or any, basically anything else. Um, <clears throat> I can see Apple getting to, to nanny state and driving off customers. Exactly. Look at the rules they place on their TV content producers. Oh, you know what? I, I think I read something about that, but I don't remember the details. But I again, I know that I know that Apple is so so concerned with that kind of stuff that I, I do feel like it's going to be their downfall. Uh, Kimo says uh, I'd be okay with that. The only way to fight business practices you hate is to stop supporting them, and the developers um, uh, hold way more sway over than than uh, that than we do. Uh, so if they all jump ship, Apple will do something. Maybe exactly. Yeah, the security aspect does. Uh, does Android have a major issue due to side loading apps or freedom offers? Uh, I don't see many stories about massive breaches on them, but not Apple. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't. I don't feel like there's a number. There's any number of pressing issues from the Android community where it's like, whoa, we're getting hacked like every day. Like they're stealing our data and all that stuff. I just don't feel like that's a thing. Like I understand that. Sure. Maybe it would be nice to just have a guarantee not happen, right? By having Apple security check everything going through the gates. But it's kind of like TSA. It's like, is it, is it really worth all of that? Or am I just going to fucking drive to LA? <laughs> like it's, I can just drive. I'll just, you know, it's a, it's a two hour flight or I can just drive, you know, for like three hours. Like, come on. Uh, bad guys cannot use Apple devices. <laughs> so if you see somebody using an iPhone, they're a good guy. <laughs> That's true. That's right, Spice. I forgot about that. Bad guys cannot use Apple devices. That is very true. There's so much weird stuff like that. Like, not just with Apple, but also with China. You know, like, Mulan is getting shit on right now. Uh, <laughs> Mulan is getting shit on because Apple changed a lot of the story, the inner workings of the story, I guess. I, I haven't seen the original. Um, and uh, they are... But they did it so to 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 appease the Chinese government so they could promote the movie there, but they're still getting media blacked out blackout because for reasons. So uh, did I say did I say did I say, did I say Apple? Sorry, Disney. Yeah, I'm just saying like I just just in general, like just in general, how companies are bending over backwards. Sorry, I didn't mean Apple. Uh, companies are bending over backwards to uh, appeal to you know a wider market, which is pretty much you know. Uh, uh, China. Uh, so yeah, sorry. I didn't mean. I didn't mean. I, I was. I was shifting gears there. But yeah, my bad. So yeah, <clears throat> I need more alcohol. Clearly, I haven't had enough. Actually, I'm. I'm like not hot right now, which is a problem. <sighs> a good guy with iOS. There you go. Quick, more booze. Let's get it in there. I have only had a couple of sips. Sides. This is um. This is like just regular margarita mix with 
with with alcohol mixed already, which is basically nothing. So, <sighs> speaking of Microsoft, speaking of Josh, clunkers. Speaking of Microsoft, the Xbox Series S and X. Uh, I have a launch date, November tenth. Woo! The memes coming out about the S were just the best. So, 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 so good. The, <laughs> my favorite one was, and it does, they were pla replacing a typical drive through you know, speaker box with it. Because that's exactly it. Can I take your order? Uh, exactly. It does look like, it looks like a little sub. It looks like a little, like a little enclosed sub, you know? Uh, you say, if a Sam does that mean I'm a shit human? Yes, Katie, you're a bad guy. You're a villain. <laughs> say, I, I had to deal with the product endorsement. It's, uh, Apple not having bad guys and stuff. Um, so, November 10th, you can pick yourself up an Xbox S or X uh, for the low, low price of, oh, my, number, my notes, my notes, $299 and $499. So, this, that's, that's in the hundreds of dollars, by the way. Uh, or... As you can see right here on the on the headline here, uh, or you can get an Xbox Series S for twenty four ninety nine, uh, or an X for thirty four ninety nine a month. It includes uh, EA EA's Game Pass. Wait, what was it? What's it called? EA uh, Play and the uh, Xbox Game Pass, which. The Game Pass, I think, as a lot of us have noticed over this past like six, seven months, has been really, really good. There has been so many games that have come out, and it's just like, like, holy shit, this is <laughs> this is free on Game Pass. All right, well, I'll just go get it on Game Pass. Um, and yeah, it's twenty four ninety nine for twenty four months. Uh, so even the 299 the 299 is a pretty yeah it's a pretty bonkers value a lot of people have commented saying that they are not impressed with the uh the space available on it i actually have somebody did a breakout of the basic specs did i get the right one let me see oh this one doesn't have it but the uh the specs for the s i think is is it a 512 ssd yeah there it is thank you it's a 512 ssd uh yeah that's like one that's like one and a half call of duties i know that's the joke <laughs> so it's a uh, 512 pci uh, cost, still costs a fortune for me that wouldn't be that big of a deal the xbox series s with 512 you know gigabytes of space that wouldn't necessarily be a, a big deal uh except for the fact that it does not have an optical drive now i understand we've moved away from cds and we've moved away from dvds and game discs and all that stuff i totally get it um but for backwards compatibility which the xbox series does support um it is not possible if you own a previous game uh vexus is that the uh what's that what that is uh let me see is that it? oh yeah here we go this is a pretty good this is a pretty good uh uh right here thank you thank you vexus <clears throat> so if you have which i think a lot of folks just inherently have if you've been playing games for a while and you've owned an xbox you probably have an xbox game laying around now you have to look and say okay so i want to be able to play this on the latest system and then just trash my xbox one or 360 or classic or whatever uh well if you have to get the xbox series x in order to play those things um and it says so a uh uhd blu-ray is stunning compared to streaming still and that is for good reason because blu-ray is something like 25 megabits per second or something like that and streaming is like eight six something like that just not as good so yes if you can get a movie on Blu-ray, which typically they come with like a code or something like that, you can you can you can you know it's, uh, uh, download it through like Ultraviolet or whatever s online service, or Disney Plus. Um, yeah, it's a huge difference in quality. Absolutely. Uh, this is I got a USB Blu-ray drive. We'll work on it. Oh, are you, oh, probably 
Microsoft is typically pretty good at some base peripherals just working with their with their with their consoles, like headsets and mice, keyboards, stuff like that. Uh, typically, and I know there's a situation where that doesn't apply, but typically um, they're pretty good with those things just working with some of their newer systems. Uh, so yeah, so in terms of uh, the Xbox Series S, if you wanted to have a backwards compatible system, that's not the way you really want to go. Uh, but the X would be. And for $34.99, it supports it's one terabyte space, so it's like, you know, it's a handful of Call of Duties. And um, it says it's a Zen 2 CPU, 8 cores, 3.8 gigahertz clock speed. I actually wonder how that, how this custom Zen 2 like stands up to like other like like for example like my system i actually wonder let me see uh let's see what like what am i running right now i'm running uh a 3.4 gigahertz now i understand the gigahertz isn't everything but i wonder what the architecture of the actual chip is and how that compares to like a you know an i7 6800 or something like that i don't know it's custom um yeah you see you don't use a disc for backwards compatibility anyway so as long as they give you a way to unlock those games so they know they've actually already said They've already they've already stated on Twitter officially that they are not. Uh, if if you have a CD or a disc for um, that you want to you know use for the Xbox Series X and have that backwards compatibility, you have to buy the game game again. They've already stated that officially. So so yeah, if you if you really want to ha- use that that collection of <laughs> I'm pointing to my collection, you can't see that collection of Xbox games that you haven't played in forever. You're gonna have to get the X. Period. Point blank. Probably comparable to a 3600X. Oh, there you go. Uh, so if you don't pay, are they going to make it unplayable? That's a great question. I did not think about that. So KDG says, if you don't pay, will that make it not work? I think it'll probably work. It'll like a car. You know, it's like if you don't make a payment, like, well, the car is a bad example because they'll repo that shit. Uh, like, uh, I don't know. That's a great question. The Microsoft police will show up. That's right. <laughs> Time to go buy an Xbox One before they sell out. Thank you, Tanner Rose. Uh, <laughs> so, so either they're getting money from, uh, see, either way they're getting money from you. Yeah. Uh, they wouldn't stray too far from normal PC CPU architecture in fear of having another PS3. Yeah. What was that? The, 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 the boom, the zoom or the, they had some name for it. Blast, blast processing. That's right. Zoom, boom, blast. One of those two. So yeah, blast processing chip. That was that was definitely a nightmare for people. A cell processor. Uh, wasn't it blast? Maybe I'm thinking to kapow. <laughs> the kapow processor. Bang. Uh, they can also make your car not start if you miss payments now. Ooh. Wow. Fancy. Was it cell? What is this blast processing thing? Hold on a second. I'm putting with a blast processing. Sega, oh man, god damn, <laughs> Jesus, I'm way, I'm way behind. <laughs> I'm so far behind on tech. Jesus, man, only only boomers had it. I didn't have a Sega. I had a friend that had a Sega though. I was jealous. Sega was awesome. It was fast. I uh, watch watch High Score by the way. They they cover all this stuff pretty well, and they they talk about all the different platforms that was coming out at around the eighties uh, nineties, um, and it's pretty fucking cool. Pretty fucking cool. Only the cool kids had second man. No, it wasn't no. Fuck you, top. It was all the only only children, only child children. Yeah, it was all the kids that didn't have brothers and sisters. Those are the ones that had Genesis. All of us, all of us plebs that had. Brothers, <laughs> we had it. We got the NES. We didn't get that. A Texas Instruments bullshit. <laughs> I did television. In television was my jam. <laughs> it was for all the cool kids. Nigga was fast. <laughs> Haven't you seen High Score? I know it was the cool kids. I know it's pretty funny. Uh, SNES games were so much better. I agree. I agree. F Zero. You can't beat that. Can't beat that. Oh, there's a lot. I mean, yeah, Genesis had a bunch of them. Strider. How about this? Strider on the Genesis versus the SNES. Way, way better on the Genesis. Like a thousand percent. A thousand percent better on the Genesis. It's not even a competition. Make a new F Zero Nintendo. Yeah. What the fuck? Although, here's the problem. If they make a new F Zero, it's going to have like curved roads and shit, like lots of curved roads. 
Uh, we need a tangent emote. <laughs> what are you talking about? We're talking about games? <laughs> what do you want? What, what do you want? We're talking about video games? Come on. This is not a tangent. We're staying on topic. So, <laughs> yes, I know. I know it's a problem, but it's fine. Um, let me see. Do, 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 do. So, yeah, Xbox Series S and X, twenty four ninety nine dollars 99 or $34.99 a month. You get Xbox Game Pass and you get EA Play for the duration of that period uh, included in that price. Or you could buy it for $299 or $4.99 November 10th. Cool. I'm excited about that. Although I don't even know if I'll pick one up. Like Xbox for me is like just an extension of PC. And it's like, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, uh, I already got a PC. Ah, uh, God. Yeah, so $25 a month? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> for two, two years, two years. You're locked in for two years. And if you don't pay it, <laughs> the Microsoft police will show up. <laughs> and, yeah, it's, and yeah, that's the other thing too. I already Not only do I already have hardware Steam Link, but they have that Steam Link app. So like if you have the Steam Link app on your Roku or your Apple TV or whatever, I don't understand what else you really need. So Xbox already crossed over PC so much. Yeah, exactly. So I'm excited for an Xbox and I'm not going to buy one. <laughs> that's basically it. <laughs> I think that's all. Oh, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. Uh, but I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> so, 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 so. Some time ago, uh, we we had another uh, uh, wave, I guess, of Me Too. Uh, uh, um, I guess allegations are. Uh, Whatever, yeah, allegations uh, that, that were coming out basically everyone, it felt like, especially in the video games, like, content creation circle. Uh, I felt like every single day, it was like, boom, 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 It was just like, da, 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 da. It was crazy. It was happening left and right. Uh, and so people that, like, that, like, people that I knew were, like, getting hit. And now just, like, don't exist anymore. They don't tweet anymore. They're just done. Um... And Twitch, Twitch, it got so big that Twitch had made a, they made a, uh, 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 they, they made a comment saying that they're going to be investigating these things and following up on them. Uh, and they did. It's taken time, but over the course of the past like month or so, we've seen a lot of uh, streamers and also employees get canned because of Me Too related Shit. Hassan. If you if you're someone that hangs out on uh R slash LSF, you are very familiar with Hassan. <laughs> so Hassan was the uh partner. Basically he handled all the partners. Uh and it was a running joke that <sighs> and I know it's not true, but it was a joke. It was a joke. Okay, it was a joke. Okay. But the running joke was that if you get banned, all you had to do was send Hassan some nudes, and you're good. That was the joke, right? Um, well, as it turns out, according to the allegations uh, levied against him, that was partially true. <laughs> it actually had some truth to it. <laughs> the allegations, again, allegations, 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 stated that uh, he had shown nudes uh that were provided to him to somebody else without the consent of the person who had sent them. Uh, and, you know, Twitch has looked into it and they have since banned him. They have also, uh, streamer bans actually implemented a new feature where they also check to see if the person's partnered anymore. So not only is he banned, but he's no longer a partner. That part shouldn't be like, <laughs> that, shouldn't, <laughs> that shouldn't be a surprise. Of course, of course he's not gonna be a partner anymore. Uh, he's not really a streamer, but yeah, so, so this is not just streamers, but also internally they are, uh, doing these, I'm guess, I, I think I read somewhere they're doing independent reviews or, um, yeah, they have an external company doing these reviews, uh, these investigations and checking these things out to see, you know, if there's any merit to some of this stuff. Um, 
So that's how, yeah, that's, a, that's what we thought. We thought it was under suspect. That's how he got banned. But we have no proof. We have nothing. We have no idea what that was. Um, they didn't stop there. They're still, they're still chipping away. They have, uh, they have Chaotic. Chaotic is a relatively known streamer. And uh, some of you guys actually may know him. Uh, but here, here actually you can see that he is no longer partnered with Twitch. So he was banned as well. So yeah, Cry is on here. What? Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know what the allegations were against him necessarily, uh, but, but yeah. So he was taken down. Uh, there was another one, Nairo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but he was a Smash champion. Uh, he was a Smash esports competitor. Let me go ahead and fix this. And he, woo, we don't need all that. Just kidding. Uh, and he uh, was banned. Uh, after he admitted to having sex with a minor. Now, I don't know when he was actually, uh, when he actually admitted to this. I feel like it was, it was a while. I, I, I get, I get all of the, all the allegations and all the admissions of guilt and all this stuff. I get them all like mixed up because it was happening. So it was rapid fire. It was all over the place. Um, but yeah, big yikes, <laughs> big yikes. Uh, <laughs> so, so, I mean, by this logic, we would assume that, like, there are others that are going to go down as well. You know, like, uh, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if Sky Williams is on the platform, but he got nailed for some stuff. Mostly just being a dick, I think. Um, so I don't really like that doesn't really count. Uh, Sinpai, Sinpai was accused of sleeping with a 14 year old, uh, by the 14 year old. Um, and, uh, you know, sh she's still not active at all but she still has a partnered account so yeah there's there's a lot of there's a lot of investigating is probably still going on uh yeah it's this this <laughs> the smash community definitely had this like dorm this like dorm building slash barracks you know kind of intermingling of like all kinds of people from different backgrounds who are just just breaking rules left and right just doing stuff they probably shouldn't with people they're not really checking ids for stuff like that um the the simple allegation is pretty it'd be I, judge after you see how old the kid i'm not gonna show his picture but after seeing how old the kid was and what he looked like at the time it's like dude that was like a child it's a fucking child uh, i don't know anything about this guy's background uh uh in terms of like who he was you know messing around with but he admitted to doing it so uh, Cry was basically grooming minors and then starting relationship with them as they, uh, as they turned of age. But other things have been told to happen, like sexual convos and nudes sent. From what I understand, yeah, man, I just don't understand. I don't, first off, and this is primarily because I'm old, right? You know, when I was 20 years old, when I was 20 years old, 18, 18, 19 years old, like, yeah, I mean, I, I probably, I'm 17 year old, fine. You know, because I'm 18 years old. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, but there's there's a certain point. Like, I would say maybe maybe in the 20s, where like you no, just cut that shit off, just be done. Uh, but this is but situations like this where there are they are like grooming people for this is uh nonsense. The half your age plus seven. That's right, half your age plus seven. That's what it was. Half your age plus seven. Although, did not always apply? I think we did the math on that last time. There was a couple situations where it's fine. Um, See, so the new law just getting signed is disgusting. Allowing people to have sex with children as young as 14 and getting away with it as long as they're in the 10-year age gap. Whoa, I don't know about this. Um, Yeah, 14. I mean, you know, as a dude, you know, it's like, you're 14. Well, I was 14 years old. I'd be like, yeah, mm, it's so awesome. I love having the sex. Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> Me, me at 14 might be down with that, but me, the dad, looking at, like, my son is like, no, 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 no. Uh, California Law SB 145, noted. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write that down on here. SB, wow, California doing this? That's weird. Sex offenders registration. Oh, it's a registration. Oh, interesting. Legislative, oh, okay, this is, this is a lot of legalese, so I'll save that for later. Um, but, yeah. Uh, Handela and Paul Miller are my best friends. That's right. 
Oh man. Oh, the, the creative ways that you would find to masturbate as a 14 year old. Oh my goodness. So. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So, uh, so yes, Twitch is still cracking down on offenders. They're invest obviously investigating internally, uh, not just their own employees, but also the, um, you know the the actual partners uh, themselves and investigating them and then and then coming down the the examples i gave today were just like the handful that happened in the past like week or so uh but this they've they've still been going pretty ham on that stuff uh I actually thought forzen was banned and so of course anytime somebody's banned especially lately it's kind of like oh what'd they do and i guess forzen just said like you know oh he said like he said a bad word or something like that he said a word you're not supposed to say and uh and then he got banned for like 24 hours or something like that so i was like oh thank god like there's there's certain people where it's like if they get banned it's just like oh bye <laughs> it's just like well see you later uh but there's others where it's like uh you know maybe not for i'm on i'm indifferent i'm indifferent um so yeah they say just uh warn that it might cause cancer it is uh, and it's allowed in cali so moving on Moving on, uh, this is something that I think probably uh, uh, in Discord we share this around a bunch, but uh, did you guys know that Apple is releasing a Mario Kart IRL thing? Uh, AR, augmented reality, set up with their, uh, with the Switch. You get a little, you get a little car that has a little camera on it, and then you can set up a course, and then you can run them all over the place on your switch which is amazing this is seriously the coolest shit did i say apple <laughs> did i say apple son of a bitch fuck god damn it clearly not drinking enough so the um the nintendo switch <laughs> you did <laughs> i'm so sorry i don't know what's wrong with me god did i say apple fuck Apple on the brain. Apple derangement says ADS. Uh, this is like twice. I know. I know. When I was a 14 year old redneck. What? What is that shit? Crip, get out of here. Anyways, yes, yes, Julian. This does look sick. This looks amazing. Uh, I cannot wait for this personally. I think this is this is the thing that all of us wanted. Like for years. There's been other other uh, hardware that try to do something similar. Uh, but hopefully Nintendo does this. Uh, right. How will they do it right? This is Raptor. You step a Tim Nintendo. <laughs> Tim Nintendo. Tim Tim Mouse. <laughs> Tim Mickey. Whatever. Yes. Yeah. All those things. Who needs imagination? We have augmented reality. That's right. Yeah. So that's coming out uh, October sixteenth. So in one month after you guys go and check out Arsenal coming nine sixteen next week one month after that is when this will be available for you so lastly lastly yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> so lastly we should talk about among us we really should we thought when fall guys came out and it was the hot shit we talked about it a little bit it's like oh yeah it's, it's the hot shit everybody we, we played a little bit it was great but look at this look at this look at this shit among us Apple us. There, did that work? <laughs> so, uh, Among Us, Apple Us is uh, a game that is just fucking blowing up. If you have not played it, the TLDR, I think Jen put it perfectly. It is gaslighting the game. Think like Secret Hitler. Think like, mm, I can't think of anything else, but it's a game where you get together with a bunch of people and one person, one to three people are the bad guys, but they are like spies. Uh, you get a number of tasks to perform in the ship and the ship looks, uh, the ship map, which I have open, of course, uh, looks kind of like this. And you run around doing tasks and uh, suddenly you find a body and you're like, oh shit, I found a body. Hit that boom emergency meeting button, bam. Everybody gets together and you're in voice and you talk and you say, I found a body here at storage uh and then somebody else says you did it and then they vote and then you get kicked off the ship which happens often unless top's in the game in which case top gets voted out first because <laughs> top is always suspect no matter what 
<laughs> and then Dimmy somehow gets away with it. That's right. That's right. So this has been, uh, Among Us has been such a fantastic game. If you are looking to spend time playing with like friends or family or whatever, it works on your phone. It's $5 on Steam. It's just a fun, casual, just, it's all, you know, also, it's really fun to watch. Like, I, I didn't watch too much before I played it the first time. Yeah, it's on mobile too. It's a little funky, but it works. Um, I didn't watch so much before I played it. And I understand now why you guys like watching it so much because I did go back to, to, to show Jen how, how the game works. I want her to try it with her friends because they have a game night. Um, I showed her a video, Disguised Toast playing it, and it was hilarious. It gets so it is a lot of fun watching somebody else play. <laughs> it really is. So yeah, the game the game basically was suggested. I guess it was the the legend says that the game was suggested to like a high ranking high high ranking streamer like maybe Soda Poppin or something, and that gave it its boost, uh, and it took off. Now this was it's a blast processor to watch. Shut up, Ajiba. Uh, so th this 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 is yet another one of those bean like character games. Okay, it, it seems like Fall Guys, bunch of like rounds, just look like a bunch of Grimace or whatever, Teletubbies. Uh, and then this game, again, same general aesthetics, the beans, uh, also blowing up. I actually wonder if it's going to start expanding from here. Like, is uh, Castle Crashers or something like that going to come back? Because Castle Crashers got kind of a hyper color look, kind of simplistic characters, maybe. Uh, maybe a couple steps out the way, but yeah. Cute, but in game, people are ruthless. Yes. A bean like. That's genius. Yes. Yes. Although, Among Us has already been out for a couple years. And people are like, this is one of those things where. You know, journalists are picking up on it. They're like, let's talk about the story behind how this game came to be. Uh, and it says, behind the Disney ride to the top for Among Us. And so it was a, they talk about just like how this game was released and it did okay. And then two years later, it's doing amazing. It's, it is, as Clayton says, a one, yeah, it is one of the most perfect 2020 games. It's like, it, so many people are trying to find ways to interact with other people, period, right? Because we've, a lot of us, especially here in the States, we've lost the ability to go to work and socialize. We want to socialize. This game is so great at facilitating that kind of communication, just getting in and talking to each other, whether you, even though you're, you're trying to, you know, <laughs> you're trying to work against, you're kind of gaslight each other and work against folks still. Uh, every game from now on will be beans for maximum profit. You'll probably see a lot of this stuff, actually. It's amazing how they are integrating old table games in new ways using technology. That's true. When I saw this, the first thing I thought was, I mean, not old, but like Secret Hitler. It's like kind of the same concept, right? Like you get in and you just, if you're the bad guy, you lie. <laughs> you just lie. Uh, three person team, two artists and one programmer. They are rich. Oh yeah. They've already announced Among Us 2. Uh, and I mean... I'm sure they're getting tons and tons and tons of feedback on what can make Among Us 2 just, you know, even a bigger hit than Among Us. I mean, Among Us is the perfect game for now because we can't really go anywhere. Oh, Clue. Yeah, Clue. Deception. Um, because we had to go anywhere. So it's a social game. Uh, getting a second one in, as long as it adds more maps, I guess, or adds more features, maybe some chat integration, that kind of shit would be... Uh, be huge. Say, uh, Red Mall says, uh, honestly, someone mentioned the game. I saw you had played it. Binge watch all of your previous streams and are now integrating this as a casual party game with my friends. Hey, that's great. That's great. And I'm glad because it, it is that kind of game. It is that kind of game. You're from Portugal. What up? Welcome. Welcome. Uh, the merch store is sold out as well. Didn't think they would even have. Whoa, really? I didn't know they had a merch store. I'll, I'll buy one of them. I'll, I'll buy a, I don't know what. Uh, <laughs> just a bean? Is that all it is? Like, what is on the shirt? Is this a bean? Uh, I wonder what they call their characters, actually. I think they had merch during launch and a bunch of extra inventory that didn't, yeah, didn't get bought from then, and now the popularity means they're back in stock. The memes are everywhere. Like, everybody has jumped on board. There, There is, like... You know how there's like uh, there's like uh, there's there's like NBA Twitter, 
and then there's like music Twitter, and then there's like uh, uh, like like blue checkmark white people Twitter, and then black Twitter. Now there's like bean twitter where it's like all it's like all like fall guys memes and all among us memes like there's so so many so much content being created just for this game it's crazy and it's just hilarious victor made one that was just beautiful and caps trying to encapsulate the uh uh, uh some of the stories that we had from our uh runs through and it's just it's so good it's so good um oh you got the you got the link inner sloth let's go take a look at their store i'm curious what they have on there Pull it up. Uh, let's go ahead and let's view this the way it's meant to be viewed. Oh man, they had a plush. Dang! Oh my god, everything sold out. You know, I bet. Oh man, oh, I'm a little upset. Yeah, and that's the other deal. Merb saying this is at 340,000 viewers right now. Right now, it is probably maybe usurped by just chatting because i'm because i'm streaming right right now but let's go to twitch and take a look and see what their uh, uh what's their number one stuff's here so we got dj cool 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 let's go look at browse jo oh so just chatting oh no it's not <laughs> it's it's number one uh but it's not number one in views let me see recommended let's go to viewers high to low let's see there it is uh 338,000 by a long shot Etsy. That's where I was going to go next. I actually go to Etsy and look. Um, the problem is my Etsy account's got a bunch of like potentially toss breaking stuff on it. Uh, but yeah, wow. It's what it's what, what it's probably not even like one person. It's so uh, Pokey's playing right now. Uh, Pestily, XQC, everyone's playing it. Everyone's playing and and rightfully so. The game is so much fun. It's so much fun. I just wish I could convince Shizzle and Josh to play it. Jerks. God, would love to get those guys in there, but nope. What is this? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the. Uh, this is. You might you might want to pause it here if you want to read this, but it's it's pretty good. It's a pretty good breakdown of what happened. Let me get let me get my shit out of the way. There you go. All right, so that this is Victor. Brilliant, so good, Victor. Thank you so much for that. <clears throat> I'm gonna remember this one forever. I'm gonna save it. Actually, save that. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Among us. Thank God I didn't have this screen up. Whoa, my save dialogue's got titties all over it. Wow, good thing we did that off screen. So, um, Mike, okay, no conscious. Yeah, that's right, no conscious. Jeez. Etsy will end up with a with a, a red bean flashlight. They probably would. <laughs> uh, where? 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 Who would do such a thing? What kind of sites? Who would do that? Where? Where? Uh, there's new short animations of Among Us on Twitter. You know who would be perfect to do those things? This Carbot. Carbot guys, the same guys who did the um, Starcrafts and the Diablo, and all the Blizzard things, they all already look like these characters. So yeah, Carbot would be perfect for this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the animated stuff, so good. So good. So so yeah, Among Us, super fun game. We'll probably play it a little bit more next week. And, um, and then yeah, that's it. So... That's it for news. Yay, we did it. My Mexican food's going to be here in a second. I ordered a chimichanga. I, felt, <laughs> like, I usually order something a little bit less white, but I felt like a chimichanga today. So it's coming in. No Cube World news? What? Don't tell me there is. <laughs> no, there's not, right? I feel like I would have known. <laughs> anytime there's any... No, I was hoping. Okay, anytime there's any Cube World anything, I get bombarded by messages, and I appreciate it. Uh, did you talk about hide and seek among us? No, we'll talk about that later. We gotta wrap up the news, okay? Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B. Chat. You guys are the best. Thank you again for being here, my co-hosts, uh, and of course, Arsenal next week, nine sixteen. You can listen to it on Spotify, all that stuff. We'll probably have a listening party. We'll go through and we'll play the entire thing from front to back, answer all your questions, all that good stuff. No yeah, questions. Did you write the song? Yeah, I wrote it. It was fun. There you go. That's it. <laughs> so that's it. Next week's going to be a busy week. So thanks for watching. Goodbye, YouTubes.